segment is sponsored by Children's Hospital of Richmond at VCU. The doctor is in and you have questions. Richmond is one of the most difficult places to live with asthma, but with proper management, kids can take control, get active and be healthy, even with asthma. Ginger Mary, nurse practitioner with the You Can Control Asthma Now program at Children's Hospital of Richmond at VCU explains some common asthma triggers and how to prevent flare ups and planning tips for a healthy school year ahead. It is great to see you, Ginger. Thanks for making time. Thank you for having me, Jessica. I really appreciate it. Our pleasure. We've got a lot of ground to cover, Ginger, but really first question, why is Richmond such a challenging place for people and children with asthma? Well, as everyone knows, when spring hits, the pollen is awful. And so high pollen counts, along with socioeconomic factors here in Richmond being an urban city, make it very difficult. We've talked often before, kind of anecdotally, about how allergies seem to be very prevalent in this area. You know, you've mentioned a couple of things that might be triggering the pollen, the, uh, the allergies here. But what is it? Is there something that, that really instigates this? What are those most common triggers uh, in addition to pollen and, and, um, and the allergies? So most common triggers are colds and the flu, unfortunately, in wintertime. Plus, we have the spring environmental allergies. Other less common are cookouts. People don't realize that. The smoke from the cookouts, dust mites, animal dander, anything environmental, strong odors, perfumes, incense. We, know we like to burn candles. Sometimes those strong smells can activate strong smelling cleaners. You know, families like to clean with those heavy duty cleaners and that sometimes can affect children with asthma. Ginger, great insights. A lot of folks watching right now may say, I never even considered that. And so there are a variety of things that can trigger asthma. What can we do to help control those, maybe help prevent some of those triggers? Are you working through in a way where you just uh, kind of test a few of those things? Will all of those things exacerbate asthma? So no, everyone of course is a little bit different. Some people will have more triggers and have to be mindful in working towards avoiding those. And some people just have a few, and I didn't mention previously, exercise. Some, some children and people just have exercise triggers and have difficulty. So working with the provider, whether it's the pediatrician or the pulmonary specialist, and making sure that you have the right medications. And even when a child seems fine and hasn't had any asthma issues in a while, they still need to take their asthma medications every day, like they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. It's easy to get in a place where you seem to be doing better and then that may fall to the wayside and then the cycle continues again. So that is definitely very key. You've got a unique program at Children's Hospital of Richmond at VCU. Can you talk us through the You Can program, Ginger? Yes, absolutely. So you can stands for you can control asthma now. And basically it's an empowerment program. We work with families to provide education and resources. And when I say we, I mean the providers here. We have several doctors, myself, we have our nurses, we have a social worker, and we just uh, recently hired a community health worker as well. We're all resources, and we work with the families to build a trusting patient-centered relationship so that they can call us when there's issues. And we have an on-call provider 24-7. So if something happens on the weekends or the night, they know that they can reach us and get help. And that is so key because time certainly is of the essence when you're having that difficulty and experiencing a flare up. We are high into summer right now, Ginger, and we have that school year, the return to a school year, unlike any other on the horizon. What are you sharing with parents and caregivers to help make our way through the summer and to get ready for that school year? Really trying to enforce getting an asthma action plan. Again, whether that's from the pediatrician or from the pulmonary specialist. That asthma action plan is basically an order for the nurse at the school to be able to give the rescue medication, the albuterol with the spacer to the child at school. Otherwise, parents get called or 
you know, emergency services has to be called if the parent isn't available by phone. So not only do we need the asthma action plan, we need it filled out correctly. So any triggers that the child has, like we mentioned before, colds, change of season, um, exercise, the school has to know that. Parents want to talk with the school nurse or the staff that's trained if there's not a school nurse on site, plus the teacher to make them aware of the symptoms that they look for. And of course, when the flu shot is available, please make sure that that child gets a flu shot to help reduce any flu symptoms that they might get if they do test positive for the flu. Great insights, Ginger, and it sounds very simple to say have an action plan, an asthma action plan, but it's a huge step to take in making sure that that's in place. Sometimes even getting the diagnosis, if you suspect something's going on, that could be even step one. Thanks for all the information. We appreciate it. Absolutely. My pleasure. Yes, and we're going to share a little bit more right now. You can visit chrichmond.org or call 804-628-UCAN. Stay tuned, there's still much more Virginia this morning coming up right after this.